In the last video, I talked about how we can get some control over IDs and reassign them. And I wanted to cover a different way of doing this and look at wrangles as well for this. So as always, this project file will be available in Patreon. And it was asked in the comments on the last video why we didn't use the ID to mask node for reassigning the IDs. And I basically responded and said that I could have used that, but it also doesn't give you the full level of control. And so I wanted to show a different way of doing it as well. And now I'm gonna show that as well, because I think it is something that is important to know that exists and how to use. But I also wanna show how we can use a wrangle as well. So let's start off with the ID to mask. And we're gonna just pipe in our ID here. And we have some different things that we have available to us. The first thing is this ID pattern, which for the life of me, I cannot get to figure out because you'd think that it'd be like ID is equal to, oh, here, hold on, before I do that, let's just look at an ID. This, first of all, this setup that we have right here, this is from the last video. So if you wanna know how to set this up real quick, then take a look at that last video. But if we look at this and we come over to a composite view, I can come to our ID channel and I can right click and come to inspect and I can look at one of these circles. So you see right below that square, it says 120. So that's actually gonna be our ID value. If I would go to a different one, you see 140 and the 132. So we'll look at 120 here. I'm gonna just deselect that for now. So if I look at our ID to mask, we can come to our ID pattern and we can type in like omit 120, right? So that does what you would think it would, but if we wanted to and just keep everything that's basically over 120, you'd think with the input being ID here that you'd just type in ID is greater than 120. But that doesn't give us anything, and I can't for the life of me figure out how to get this to work inside this node. I'm not sure exactly why it doesn't, because it's supposed to work somewhat like the regular groups inside of Houdini and this doesn't seem to work. So it's gotta be something with this name, but I can't figure out what this name actually is. And I don't see it in the docs. So if you know the answer to that, please let us all know in the comments, cause I would love to know how that actually works. But we have some different things in here. So we have our keep by range. So we have this. So if I looked back at our IDs, they start around like 100. So we can do our start and end. We can set our start ID, and our end ID, but we don't need to do that in here. We can offset the range if we wanted to. Well, actually we can keep this. So like I said, 120 or uh, 100 is about where they started. I don't remember exactly what they were. And then they go up to like 150 or something. So we get some of that and we can you know, adjust this as we, as we need to bring them all in, get them all in there. And then we can you know, offset this by however much we want. So typical things, this is similar to like the group nodes inside of Houdini. So we have our random chance as well. So we have our probability here. We can increase or lower that. We can change our seed around. I don't like this because it doesn't have the, the ability to just get rid of this backdrop. The backdrop, I mean, you can, but the if I look at this, our, I set this to, Back on here, if we look at our ID here, if I look at our ID for our <laughs> the background, it's this huge numbers. So I haven't actually tried typing that in. I'm assuming you can get rid of it if you type that big long number in, but I'm not gonna do that. I wish it would assign that to be like ID zero or something just by, by default. Uh, but again, that would be where this ID pattern would, be, would come in handy because then we could just set this to like greater than, you know, 1 million or something like that. And then, or less than, I mean, sorry. And then I would get rid of that. But unfortunately that's not how that works. And I, like I said, I can't, can't figure out how to get that to, to work. So we have that and then we have keep within mask. This one's interesting. So we need a mask for this. So I'm gonna just, um, actually I'm gonna drop down a ramp in order to show this. So we'll wire this in here. And you can already see that this is starting to work here. But 
what you're kind of not seeing is what's making it work uh, or you may not realize what's happening here so this threshold is actually a threshold for the value so this goes from zero to one so it's just a you know gradient from zero to one so it starts at zero over here goes all the way over to one and halfway in between is where we have this threshold set so it's going to cut off right down the middle here so if i come back to this and i lower the threshold we're going to start to bring some of those back in so anything above this threshold is going to be kept in with this mask so you can raise this all the way up and we're going to just get rid of everything so you can play around with this you can do some cool things if you wanted to you know take this and multiply it we could pipe this into our foreground and our shape into the background now we could use this as a mask and we can play around with this, you know, be clamp this. Maybe we just want like the center or something. You know, you can do all sorts of, of cool things with this. We could set this to like a radial gradient. And I can just reset this and we get something interesting like this. And again, obviously we can play around with this and get some of that to come back. So super interesting way to, to work with this. But I do really want to quickly cover the wrangle this is a little interesting i'm just starting to play around with the wrangle i haven't fully figured out everything with this but it is something that is pretty cool to play with so if we take a look at our angle here let's wire in our id into here gonna get an error to start off with that's because this is an id um, output and it needs an id input here so the id is something that's specific it's a specific type of input, so we have to set this to ID. I'm just going to call this ID, and if we get that, let's go ahead and let's see. I'm going to close this out and reopen it because it's giving me a weird view there that I don't like. I guess it was just how far I was zoomed out. Okay, so if we take this, we also need a second output because we can't write a mask to this ID channel. So we're going to create a second one here and we're going to call this, make this a mono one and we'll call this mask. And again, we need to change this to be our input here. And with this, we want to just basically use the same things, same type of, of vex that we would normally use. So all the vex functions seem to work, or at least a lot of them do. So we can use the same sort of a setup here. So we can do if at ID is greater than, let's say, I don't know, 1, 140. Then we can make our at mask equal to 1. And then boom, we have this. So we could set this up to be a, I'm sure, I haven't actually tried this, so we'll do a channel integer. Yeah, we'll do an integer. And we'll go just call this um start i guess and what we have to do actually i don't know if this work id we're gonna try it we'll see what happens yeah we need that and let's create that spare parameter and let's set this to that 120 or that 135 yeah so that does work i hadn't hadn't tried that but that's good to know that you can still use these you know, channel the channel parameters to work exactly the same way as you normally would. So I can increase this and we'll start to get some of those to pop out. I'm gonna lower that back down and we'll get those to come back. So looks like it is taking a second to update there. I don't know whether it is because I'm recording or not. Wouldn't think. Maybe this is just running a little slow. I know OpenCL runs really, really fast inside of Copernicus, so or inside of just Houdini in general, so maybe writing this in OpenCL would be a little bit better. But overall, that is how you can set this up, do some very quick things inside of a wrangle and mess around with this, which may be the best plan, honestly, for messing around with IDs. It allows you to uh, write your code and do things very quickly and, and easily through that. Uh, because these are all just integer values that we're piping in um, so it works pretty well but anyways hopefully this has helped you out i just wanted to cover that really quickly because i did kind of skip over this id to mask node i did that kind of for 
a, a reason because I wanted to show versatility of the other ways of working, but I also wanted to cover that in the wrangle since there was a, a question about that. So anyways, like I said, hopefully this has helped you out. This project file will be available on Patreon. If you want to grab it, you can do so on there. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day. Thank you.